This is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 300. Yes, you heard that right. 300 produced episodes on the channel. I'm super happy to be doing this. I'm going back to my roots and looking at commander cards. We just had Eternal Masters come out. We're going to do a top 10 commander list today. And I'm going to shake things up a little bit. I'm going more into my personal opinions here, less into the objective, and I'm just gonna have some fun today. Additionally, I'm gonna be out at Gen Con. Yes, I got a Magic the Gathering press pass. I'm out there as a reporter for Magic and for board games at the founding place of where Magic launched. I mean, I guess the home of Magic is really here in the Northwest because that's where Richard Garfield was and where uh, Wizards is, but I'm gonna be out there playing Vintage, playing EDH. If you see me around, ask me for an angel token. I'm having some extra angel tokens there by Sam Kaiser printed up to hand out at Gen Con. I hope to see you guys out there. Let's jump into this. Let's see if I can ruffle some feathers and have some fun with Commander today. Not on this list is gonna be Winter Orb. Why not Winter Orb? Winter Orb is a miserable card to play against. Yeah, it's great in Legacy. If you want to watch people cry and you want to crush them with a spiky card, go play some Legacy. Sell a kidney, or I think it actually takes like two children now to get into Legacy. But we're going to talk about cards that have fun. Let's jump in with the honorable mentions. These are cards that didn't make the list. Sensei's Divining Top could easily be number one, but it really just gets you to other cards. So let's look at cool, fun cards. Honorable mentions here. There just aren't enough spots, and I see all of these as really dueling cards. Jace the Mind Sculptor puts this giant target on your head, and what happens? Everybody comes after you. Might not recommend it always. Amazing card. Force of Will, 1v1, amazing card. There's better cards in Commander. Vindicate, oh, such good removal, but only gets rid of one item. And in Tomb, if you want to play that reanimator deck that makes everybody scoop on turn three, that's the card for you. But it didn't make my top 10 list because I'm here to have fun. Moving on, honorable mentions, eight and a half tails. Now that is a fun card. It does these really cool things where you have combat and you get to slide by and attack and yeah, it can be broken occasionally, but it's gonna be super cheap now because it just got reprinted in mass. Blood Artist, you can wipe the board or other people are afraid of that. Gain lots and lots of life. Isochronic Scepter, oh, such a good card. Reuse all your other good cards, but I'm putting the other good cards in the list. And unexpectedly absent, Great removal, really nice in response to a fetch slam. I have even used this to protect my own item, just put it back on top. Great card, there's just not enough room on this entire list. Number 10 spot here, Gamble, and some honorable mentions. Gamble, such a good card, especially if you have Reanimator or some type of dredge going on. Grab that card, put it into your hand. One casting cost tutor. Who doesn't like tutors? Honorable mentions here also, because, well, I want like 20 cards on my top 10 list. It's Sneak Attack and Price of Progress. Put that giant creature into play for a turn. Have the ability to bring anything out as a blocker. Such a great card. And Price of Progress, if somebody's playing all those dual lands, tell them, no, 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 no. No, let's play fair here. You should have put some basics in your deck. Number nine here, Future Sight. Oh, with beautiful new artwork. Just wonderful. Combos well with Sensei's Dividing Top. Gives the table some information. Yeah, might be a little bit over the top, but it's five casting costs with three blue. People should be able to respond to that. Such a fun card. Definitely play this if you're in blue. Dak Faden. Oh, my favorite from Conspiracy. Back in Eternal Masters. Now I'll be able to get some foils for my vintage deck. But we're talking about EDH here. And it is wonderful to combo this guy with other interesting ways for you to draw cards or to steal that ridiculous card that's out there. Opponent drops a Blight Steal. Might as well steal it and hit them back with it. Number seven, Maze of Ith. This thing makes combat crazy. It is an incredible card. Play it with Knight of the Reliquary and you will find many, many tricks. I've also seen it in just a fun Inspire deck as a way to make sure your Inspire goes off. Additionally, a lot of people don't know, you can untap the creature after it has attacked and dealt damage. You're still in the attack phase after dealing damage. It basically gives vigilance to creatures. So cool, great card. Number six, this is a commander, the Eternal King, Brago, who knows if I'm pronouncing that right. Hey, you could play it in spiky or casual decks. It's a build around commander. This is what I like from commanders, is a commander that you can put your whole deck into and they can get behind that commander. So happy to see him back. And this is just a fun type of card that 
possibly abusable in competitive decks, but also wonderfully fun to play with. Number five spot here, I've got tutors. Who doesn't love a tutor? Please don't put 30 tutors in your deck, but two or three, especially so you can grab those answers to keep the game going. Vampiric tutor and enlightened tutor are two of the best that are out there. The number four spot, Toxic Deluge. Three casting cost board wipe. You can kill an Emmercool with this. Yeah, it takes 15 life, but who cares? You've got a million life, it's EDH. Design a deck with giant butts on your creatures. Your creatures live, their creatures die. What more can you ask for? Doran is a commander to play this card with. Number three spot, Sylvan Library. This is a blue-black card in green. It's like it's color shifted. Draw all the cards. Remember, you've got unlimited life in EDH, or at least it feels that way. Two extra cards per turn, eight life. Nobody's gonna notice, they're not gonna kill you. Don't worry about it. Take the extra cards, they're good for you. Number two spot here, Natural Order. This card is a tutor that puts it directly into play. It's like they made this set for green and for us EDH cube players. So we can do crazy stuff like get Regal Force and we've even got Green Sudden Zenith in there. Such a good set. Natural Order, definitely pick it up now. This is a wonderful, wonderful, powerful card that is great for EDH. The number one spot here, it's Mana Crypt. Remember, you've got huge amounts of life. Who needs to pay one for a soul ring when you can pay zero? Get to those overpowered cards as quickly as possible with a Mana Crypt. Oh, thank you, Wizards. Eternal Masters has just been a really fun set for those of us that enjoy EDH and Eternal formats. So good. We made it through the top 10 list. If you disagree with me, put your own list in the comments. Right here, I'm also starting an Ask Anything. It's number 300, so I've got to do an Ask Anything. I'll do it before the end of the month here. Anybody's comments that are in there, I'll take a look at. If you want to guarantee that I'm going to respond to the comment, become a patron for $1 a month. I thank you eternally for $2. I even do a pack opening here on the channel, and for $5, your name goes in the credits. Help me get up to 15,000 subscribers and subscribe for more enlightenment around Magic the Gathering. Thank you to everybody who makes this channel possible. And until next time, choose the cards wisely. Play with Knight of the Relic. Relic. This is a crazy set. I think that's too much. Maybe that's over the top. I don't know.